Hi, I'm Dr. Brett Watwood, your instructor for Spring 2021 EDU 6333. The past year has seen both a global pandemic and societal calls for justice, which has meant that social media has taken on new importance as a means of communication and dialogue. But what does social media in education and training mean? I would submit that social media has moved beyond what it meant even a year ago. This is social media and beyond. What does beyond actually mean? We'll take a look at this course and see. I'm speaking to you from my home in Central Virginia. The t-shirt is one of my favorite smooth jazz bands, Hiroshima. The music is a fusion of jazz, Japanese instruments, and California influences. In many ways, social media is also a mix of influences. My hope is that you'll critically explore social media with me, neither a fan nor a foe, but rather an impartial researcher looking to enhance learning. So, welcome to the EDU 6333. As I said, I am Brett Watwood, your instructor. I am also at B. Watwood on Twitter. I have an email address. I blog. I have a LinkedIn account. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and a host of other social sites. In other words, I have a digital identity, just like you do. And it is this interplay between our social identities and education that we'll explore over the next 12 weeks. So let me run through a bit of course overview for you. Social media has certainly been in the headlines the past year. Last fall, our national elections took place and social media played a part. Social media has helped people organize for social justice. Social media has been instrumental in getting the word out about how to protect ourselves during this pandemic and spreading rumors that are false. So what do we say to our students? Do we ignore social media or do we leverage it for learning? This course is an opportunity, an opportunity to experiment with the social side of the web, explore its ethical and not so ethical uses, and determine for yourself where the social media fits your organization and your own professional needs. I have been an advocate for its use, but it is important to understand both the affordances and the darker challenges that social media provide. We're going to do this collaboratively, using social media as part of the dialogue for this course. We'll be looking forward, but we'll also look back to see if technological transitions of the past might inform our future with digital technology. After all, the coming of the personal computer and even chalk blackboards required shifts in teaching practice. We will look at recent research and explore what it says about integrating technology in the learning experience. We will explore whether the participatory web or what some call Web 2.0 can enhance motivation and cognition. And we do all of this in the backdrop of COVID-19 and George Floyd. There are two required books for this course. Education and Social Media is a 2016 book edited by Christine Greenhow, Julia Sondervan, and Colleen Auger. We supplement this book with a new 2019 book on digital citizenship by Kerry Rogers Whitehead that moves us into more of a digital literacy perspective. I am also suggesting two optional books, Siva Vate Heidenthin's 2018 Anti-Social Media, which as its tagline implies, looks at how social media, and Facebook in particular, moves through algorithms and practice to disconnect us rather than connect us, and in the process undermine democracy. This book provides a nice balance to the optimistic view of the use of social media in education that some of our other readings provide. And while a little dated, Paul Anderson's 2012 book, Web 2.0 and Beyond, is in some ways now a history book. And I feel that the background he provides is good grounding for any educator. They're both optional, but I'll allude to both in the, as the term progresses. As I mentioned earlier, these are indeed interesting times. Two years ago, a firestorm 
erupted over Facebook and Cambridge Analytica's mining of personal data. Because of a loophole in the terms of agreement, signing up for Facebook not only meant that you gave the company the right to look at your data, including all your phone calls and text messages, but you gave it permission to mine that same data from all your friends. So Cambridge Analytica was able to leverage the data of a quarter million Facebook accounts into the data of some 50 million people and use that data to target political ads. President Trump made Twitter his default means of communication, from informing people when he had fired them to demeaning political foes. And eventually, after the January 6th insurrection, Twitter dumped Trump. One could suggest that President Trump's use of Twitter is a case study in and of itself. This makes our course both extremely relevant and a constant shifting target. Your job is to be open to using social media, but still skeptical as to its efficacy. I will try each week to provide both pros and cons, and I hope you will as well through Twitter. We're going to be exploring this together. This is a fast 12 weeks. We will start with defining social media while at the same time using it through Twitter. In the second week, we'll build on the concept of a personal learning network through social media. Then over the course of the coming nine weeks, we'll shift back and forth between theoretical concepts and practical tools and platforms. Most of our coursework will take place in Canvas. And we'll also use Twitter weekly. Notice that I've scratched out Facebook. I used to also have this class conduct some discussions in a closed Facebook group, but given the data mining issues that have surfaced, I no longer think it's morally right for me to require students to have a Facebook account. So I dropped that requirement in this class. I still think LinkedIn is a good option for all of us as professionals. So we'll use it to connect, but not for any actual coursework. In the Canvas menu of our course, you'll find a tab for modules. And our very first one is Start Here. Notice that it has info on the course flow, the syllabus, and importantly, information on the pre-course setup. The pre-course setup provides information on setting up a dummy email account, which is an option but not required, setting up a Twitter account, using TweetDeck or Hootsuite, and these are two platforms that make man managing Twitter easier, and pick one, not both, and a survey to help me get to know each of you better. Those of you who have had me before will recognize this. I use a process for online teaching called PIA, or Preparations, Interactions, and Assessment, something I picked up from practices at St. Leo University in Florida. Each week, you'll see a consistent weekly module set up in this format I'm showing for week one. Preparation lays out an overview of the week and provides a very detailed task list with due dates. Interactions is where you interact with content, each other, and me. An assessment provides information on how you're being graded, as well as what comes next. As with most Northeastern courses, there's a weekly flow to this course. Typically, by Thursday, you will have tweeted something in response to prompts I will give you. By Friday, you will have authored your weekly post in the discussion form. And note that in Canvas, the form is built right into the weekly module. Between Friday and Sunday, you'll continue engaging with your classmates and me in both Twitter and Canvas, commenting on posts and comments. You will note that weekly participation makes up 25% of your grade, and half of that comes from commenting. If you wait until late on Sunday to comment to others, you're not giving them time to respond back and your grade will suffer accordingly. The other signature assignments are noted here. I've designated the infographic, your poll analysis, your social media plan, and your legal case analysis as signature assignments. And these you will load into your ePortfolio at the end of the course. 
So that provides an overview of this course. The young lady in this picture is one of my granddaughters back when she was two. She's now 13, owns her own iPad, has her own iPhone, loves emojis, texts me weekly, and will soon enter the world of social media. So I take this course personally. This is the course in which my four grandkids are growing up. I hope this course is as meaningful to you. The old saying that you get out of it what you put into it certainly applies to social media. And I look forward to learning with you.